Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hello and welcome to this episode of our show. This is your host, Keith Doherty. Today, our special guest is top real estate agent Denise D'Amico of Caldwell Banker Vanguard Realty based out of Jacksonville, Florida. Denise's business is unique as she does traditional real estate, helping buyers and sellers, but she also has a great relationship with asset companies that are buying non-performing mortgage notes from banks, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and HUD. She reaches out to these borrowers, options to save their home from foreclosure by offering a workout plan if they qualify, a short sale, and a deed in lieu options, and they will forgive them from the debt. Should they choose the short sale or revert back to the asset company, then she will serve as the listing agent. She has worked hard for many hours and in, in few years to establish this rapport with these companies, but she considers it as a wonderful avenue as she does what she loves. Indeed, her passion for this business makes working 15 hours a day, seven days a week fly by quickly. She has closed 37 homes already this year. All right, with all that said, Denise, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for inviting me. Denise, if we could start for our listeners, what led you into real estate? Was it something that you always knew you wanted to do, or did you maybe stumble into it? Because I grew up in the business, I pretty much decided I did not want anything to do with it. And then when I had my first daughter, I decided for fun just to go get my real estate license because I was bored as a stay-at-home mom. That led me into working part-time with a top producing real estate agent just to have something new to keep from being bored and the bug bit and it became a passion. Excellent and can you talk a little bit about what personal attributes, traits or qualities you think have most contributed to the success that you've had and then talk a little bit about how you think you developed those? I think the biggest thing that has helped me is the fact that you first have to be a people person and you have to be willing in the real estate business to put on a pair of shoes that, you know, would let you leave, the, you know, walk in shoes to say a buyer that the first time home buyer that's 100000 or a buyer that is a million dollar, bought their seventh home, or a seller that's selling their first home or a seller that is selling their tenth home. So I think the ability to almost be a chameleon to absorb a role. So I think that's the number one thing is being able to put yourself in the shoes of your customer and see how they need, what they need from their point of view. So that's the first attribute. The second one is being able to multitask. I, I've been told that I can switch gears on a dime and go 10 different directions. The same focus I have to do a to-do list every day to keep me on track and be willing to be flexible um, is another key um, trait in this business. Somebody that's not that's very rigid and not flexible to the demands of the customer, they're not going to succeed. So tenacity is also another trait that I think um, makes a successful agent. Excellent. And do you think you could give our listeners an example of when these traits have played a role in your path towards success? Absolutely. The, I guess tenacity is that for example, I have one buyer right now. They're very, very savvy. They've moved from out of state across the country. To find them the right home has become a driving force for every day that I wake up and I look to see the hot sheet, what's on the market, what's falling through that's come back on the market. And being tenacious to find them the right home in the area, that is one, one trait. The other trait is... Um, as far as the passion for it is understanding them, what their needs are, and being able to, you know, relate to them. And at the end of the day, it kind of feels good that they keep gravitating back to me when they have gone through quite a few agents. So that's, that's one aspect. The other thing is being focused on what their needs are, um, that, you know, okay, we need to make sure that the house does not have aluminum wiring because he's an artist and he has kilns and he's going to overheat the wiring. So being aware of what their needs are and being able to focus to make sure that when I find the right home that I ask the right questions. 
that's just an example right now of what I'm going through with someone. I guess uh, also on top of, uh, you know, as you've built success over the years, I think a lot of times uh, not everything's always a, a smooth sailing, you know, uh, trip uh, to, to, to the end. Can Never. you talk a little bit? about some of the major adversities or trials that you've had to overcome in order to achieve your goals? Absolutely. The biggest thing is, we'll start out with the biggest adversity for me is that, you know, when you're a brand new agent starting out in the business, you have a knowledge, a lack of knowledge. So there's a huge learning curve. And the way that I overcame that was that I tried to follow my home inspector around so I could understand homes, I could understand construction. The next thing is understanding the contract. A huge obstacle for any real estate agent starting out in the business is dealing with the old timers that know so much more than you that will speak down to you and having to learn to bite my tongue, which sometimes I'm not very good at, and just for the sake of my buyer, being able to swallow my pride and say, I'm sorry whether you're right or wrong, to overcome the adversity of dealing with other people. Because in a real estate transaction, it's not you with your client. It's you with your customer and another real estate agent and their customer, and then there's lenders. And it, so there's so many different moving parts in a real estate transaction. And with those parts come different personalities and misunderstandings and being able to bite your tongue or swallow your pride to achieve the ultimate goal, and that is giving your client what they need from the biggest learning curve. Yeah, I could see how that could be. Uh, you know, we've, we've uh, interviewed quite a few uh, agents uh, on this show, and uh, it definitely seems like that's a, a big obstacle, especially when you, like you said, you have somebody with a lot more experience and a lot more seasoned, especially when you're starting out, that they sometimes try to steamroll a new agent because they feel oh, that yeah. they can push push you around because they've been around longer. Correct. So um, I guess, you know, what kept you going? You know, you run in these obstacles. I mean, to me, it would be frustrating. You're, you're coming against these people. You're trying to do the right thing. What? Why don't you give up? What's your driving force? My driving force is fear. Um, and I never realized that until about a year ago, what drives me, what motivates me. Well, I'm passionate about what I do. I love it. I can do it in my sleep, but also fear. Fear of failure I, is what motivates me. I do not want to fail because I'm passionate and I love what I do. So fear can be a driving force for a lot of people, and they've done a lot of psychological analysis on that, so I know I'm not on but I do not want to fail my family. I do not want to fail myself. So the, I work out of fear of failure, and that is, and fear of failure can, if you embrace the fact that you can swallow your pride and say, I'm sorry, because you don't want to fail. You can swallow your pride to put up with those that steamroll you, but be willing to be strong. Fear can motivate you in many different ways. Mine just motivates me towards success. Excellent. And I guess uh, kind of looking forward a little bit, what is your vision for your career and your business say, over the next five years? Because I've been so successful and at this point in my career, I have a group of young people that are working with me. I don't like to say for me, they're with me. I get a lot of success now is helping those that are willing to grab onto my shirt tails and learn this business. I do not want to do this for the rest of my life. I do not want to be paving the pound, you know, pounding the pavement up and down the road when I'm 75 years old. So my my vision for me in the next three years is that my daughter's going to graduate high school. I would like to have a rental pool that would give me some income coming in. They will be paid off. But in the same token, I do love what I'm doing. So taking the younger generation that are in their 20s that I'm working with now that are with us and training them, training them for this business. And, you know, if I refer someone to them, then I will get past, you know, income off of them from my time of training them. But in the same token of training, I am not a very patient person by nature. I run 100 miles an hour. So the first thing I let them know is I set the expectation is I'm not going to slow down. I'm not going to stop to train you. If you want to grab onto my shirt tail and hang on, you're going to learn more about this business by being with me. 
And those that cannot do it, they fall to the side, and that's okay. I used to take it personally. Those that are successful have stayed on. I have one guy that's been with me three years, and he is now my certified business partner. We do everything together. And I told him three years ago, if you want to, if you want to work with me, just stay with me. And I tell everyone he's like a leech on me. He never let go, and I trust him 100% with my business. We do everything together, and now we have a new group that we're kind of bringing up and training them. Excellent. And I guess kind of on top of that as well, uh, as you continue to move forward, what do you feel is the best way that you market yourself as a real estate professional for continual growth? I think it's, I'm a um, very face value person, not the shiny, hey, let's do all the marketing and, you know, send it out. I do market in my own personal neighborhood that I live in, in Jacksonville, because I've sold more homes than anyone. So, yes, my marketing pieces, my updating in the neighborhood, that's one aspect of mar marketing. But I would say 95% of my business has come from face value, being in front of people. I work with a lot of asset companies that I have personally flown out to California and met them. I've spent time on the phone. I've gone to South Florida and met them. So it is a face value, but also the other part of my marketing aspect is not just the face value, but the willingness to be there when they need me. You market yourself. And so my marketing is my, my face value in doing that. Excellent. And I think also um, when it comes to real estate agents, it seems like um, from a, a market standpoint, from the consumer standpoint, sometimes there's misconceptions of, of what an agent actually brings to the table and what they can do. What do you think the biggest misconception or myth that people have about working with a real estate agent is? The number one misconception is that they feel they can't trust us because they feel we're all about the money. They feel we make too much money and do not do much work. But what they do not realize is that they're paying for what's between our ears. That's a knowledge. So it's not the fact that I have a real estate license. I can go take pictures and put your home on the market. But what you're paying for, the biggest misconception is the knowledge I have that when you ask me to come into your home to look at listing it, and I'm talking from a seller's perspective, you're going to pay that commission based on my knowledge. They, a, that I can walk through your house and say, I need you to do this, this, and this. I know which questions to ask. I'm going to say, okay, an obstacle here is that your roof is 20 years old and it should have been replaced five years ago. This is what we needed to save your home. So they're paying for that knowledge between my ears. Not, I'm not getting overpaid and not doing any work. It's taken years to gain this experience. With a buyer, even though the buyer is not paying for me outright, it is incorporated in us. The seller pays for the buyer's agency. Well, they're paying for us because of the knowledge we do to bring to the table. That I don't. Tell, I tell buyers that I'm not out to sell you a home. My job is to guide and protect you. The biggest misconception is that agents just open homes and write up contracts and we make all this money. So, and that is not true. We are actually there to guide and protect buyers and sellers. And we're getting paid for that knowledge and experience and, of course, being there. 5.30 at night, 7 p.m. at night, early morning and weekend. Excellent. And I guess uh, kind of a give you a little situation um, here. Let's say you get a call from a family member. They're in another state. They want to sell their home. And uh, what advice would you give them about selecting an agent that could best serve their needs? Now, we understand from a, 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 a real estate standpoint, you could obviously make a referral and, and, and check agents out. But in general, what kind of guidance would you give them so that you could help them pick an agent to best serve their needs, kind of like how you make sure you take care of your clients? I would ask them if they first know of any agents, their name, that specialize in the area that they would like to purchase them. If they know of some name, then... I will go online and check them out. If they do not, then I actually will go online, pull up that zip code or that area or that city, and just see if I see some agents who stick out. I just recently did this for a neighbor of mine that needed to sell a lot down in South Florida. And I actually just went online. I looked at agents. I looked at agents that had listings in the neighborhood. And I pulled up their website. Next thing I did was I picked up the phone just to kind of interview. But then I did go back to 
for example, to my neighbor, and I said, okay, what are your goals? Would you sell this? What are you looking for? Because the number one thing in our business is personality. You can have the best agent, but if they have a horrible personality, and there's or there's a personality clash, it's not going to be successful. So I think the biggest thing is first asking my friend, relative, is what are you looking for? And then trying to find what they're looking for in an agent. And then also kind of give them guidance. And then I just, I then at that point, we'll back off. And if someone wants to, if they need uh, real estate assistance, especially in the uh, Jacksonville, Florida area, what's the, the best way that they can find out more information about you and how you can help them? They can go to my website at www.denisedemico, D-E-N-I-S-E-D-E-M-I-C-O.com. And they can find out more information there. Or, you know, if they can pick up the phone and call me because I do take the call. The other thing that I do is on my voicemail is if anyone calls my voicemail, I change it daily so that I set the expectations of those calling of when I can call them back. And um, I return all my calls. So that's the best way if they would like to speak to me personally. And I've been very honest with people that if I can't help them, I will refer them to who can. I do get a lot of people that will call ask me to help them with rentals. I do not handle rentals. It's beyond my expertise. So I will actually say, I think you need to call this person because they're going to be the best one to help you. I think sometimes just picking up the phone and talking to me is sometimes the best way but to find me and go to my website. Excellent. Well, Denise, we want to thank you, obviously, for taking time out of your schedule to come here today and share your real estate professional experience with all of our listeners. And if you're listening and you want to find out more about Denise, you can go to her website, like she said, denisedomico.com uh, or actually below this interview we'll have a link to her website and any other contact information that we have uh, for Denise so that you can reach out and see if, uh, if uh, she's a good fit and she can help you with your real estate needs. So with that said everybody until our next show have a great day and we'll talk to you all soon. Thank you so much Keith. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.